Good morning, guys and girls. Last week, we worked on our noun clauses. And so now that we've mastered our noun clauses, we're going to try some phrases that do the jobs of nouns. And remember, nouns act as subjects, direct objects, objects of a preposition, predicate nouns, and indirect objects. But first, we want to make sure we know what we mean by a noun phrase. So the first phrase that we're going to look at is an appositive or an appositive phrase. I'm going to provide for you on Google Classroom some resources so you'll be able to test yourselves. One of those is this English Grammar 101 site. It's got some pretty good resources and we'll take a look. It's very important for us to know that an appositive is a word or a phrase that renames the noun. We went over this briefly in class, but this is where you could use the appositive in place of the noun that comes before it. So it's not necessary to the actual structure of the sentence, though sometimes it is important to understanding what's going on in the sentence. So, in this sentence, my uncle, a doctor, is moving to New Jersey. Uncle is being renamed by doctor. So you could say, my uncle is moving to New Jersey, or you could say, a doctor is moving to New Jersey. And the sentence will work either way. So doctor is the appositive. That's just an appositive by itself. An appositive phrase is going to have more than just one word. It'll have maybe some adjectives. So here, this is an example of an appositive phrase. My uncle, a doctor in California, is moving to New Jersey. This is an appositive phrase because it's not only that he's a doctor, but it includes the prepositional phrase in California to complete the thought. Still, you would be able to switch out my uncle is moving to New Jersey with a doctor in California is moving to New Jersey. The major difference between a noun clause and any type of phrase is that noun clauses, if you remember, had to have a subject and a verb in the phrase, or in the clause, my apologies. In a phrase, you don't have both a subject and a verb. You might have an object, but you don't have a subject and a verb. So there's no verb in here. That's the difference between the two. So let's take a look at some of the examples that I have here. A couple I wrote and a couple I found online. So in this sentence, Jerry, a firefighter, is my good friend. The appositive is a firefighter. So I'm going to underline that. That, even though there's an article there, articles, they don't necessarily count. I don't want to say that and hurt their feelings, but they don't really count. So this is just a plain old a positive. Since it's not really necessary, I also have it set off by commas. You can't really do wrong by setting an a positive off by commas, but there are some instances where you don't need them. So let's take a look at our next sentence. Our first president, George Washington, never lived in the White House. In this sentence, George Washington is our a positive. Again, not in a positive phrase, it's just his name. You technically don't need the commas here, but you can't go wrong by adding them, so when in doubt, use commas. Let's check it out. Our first president never lived in the White House, that makes sense, and George Washington never lived in the White House. So George Washington 
can take the place of our subject here, our first president. They're interchangeable. That's something special about a positives. Now, I found some weird, kind of gross and funny sentences that I thought I would include here just because they might have a little bit of uh, an effect. So, I found them on a funny grammar website. Here we go. The insect, a cockroach, is crawling across the kitchen table. Here, we just have a plain old a positive. In the next sentence, though, the insect, a large cockroach, that's another a positive phrase. Not in a positive. It's in a positive phrase because it includes the adjective large, which is telling us about the cockroach. Our next sentence goes even further, and it gets a little more ridiculous. The insect, a large cockroach with hairy legs, is crawling across the kitchen table. So here, we have an even bigger a positive. Now we not only know that it's a cockroach, we know it's a large cockroach, and we know it has hairy legs. So here, this a positive phrase has not only an adjective before the noun that is the basic part of the positive, but it also has a follow-up of with hairy legs, which is a prepositional phrase that's acting like an adjective because it's telling more about the cockroach. But this whole thing is describing the insect. So even if we were to switch it out, we could say a large cockroach with hairy legs is crawling across the kitchen table. Or we could still say the insect is crawling across the kitchen table. And the same idea is being communicated. But the positive lets us add in a lot more detail. So that's what they're really good for. And this one takes it a step further. We've been talking about uh, clauses before jumping into a positives. So for this one, we have the insect, a large hairy legged cockroach that has spied my bowl of oatmeal is crawling across the kitchen table. So for this one, a large hairy legged cockroach that has spied my bowl of oatmeal is our a positive phrase. But within the a positive phrase, we have that has spied my bowl of oatmeal. We have a clause, a dependent clause right in here. Now we haven't gotten into these yet, but I'm pointing it out because we're gonna get there. Just like Prepositional phrases can be adjectives, so can clauses. We talked about noun clauses, but when we get to adjective clauses, this one, that has spied my bowl of oatmeal, is describing cockroach. So this could have been its own sentence, but now it's describing cockroach, so this is going to be something we'll talk about in the future called an adjective clause. Not the biggest point right now, the thing we really need to pay attention to is when you're looking for a positives, you want to try to make sure you're looking between the whole set of commas if there are commas there. And if you have to include commas, you need to know that the whole idea that is renaming needs to be, be a positive. So you would need to put a comma here and a comma here. If you take out the a positive, the rest of the sentence should make sense. So the insect is crawling across the kitchen table is the basic sentence. If I didn't identify the entire a positive, if I had the insect bowl of oatmeal is crawling across the kitchen table, that actually gets confusing. Or if I left in the insect, a large hairy legged is crawling across the kitchen table, it wouldn't make sense. So the whole thing that goes together to rename insect is the positive, whether it's one word, cockroach, or whether it is an entire a positive phrase 
that includes clauses or like here if it includes prepositional phrases whatever is the entirety of what describes or renames the word right before it the noun that will be the appositive so think it as extra information that doesn't need to be there but if it's there it all has to be there or none of it so your job now is going to be taking a look at the resources that I've put on Google Classroom. You can work with one or two other people in your groups, or you can choose to work by yourself. And you want to try to find and label all of the appositives in the activities that I have for you. Good luck.